Um, cool. Welcome to Juno Bee. My name's Becca, and I'm an Aries Sun, Scorpio Rising, Gemini Moon. I'm a little sleepy today. Uh, you know, drank a little too much last night, keeping up with that destructive Aries energy. Today we're talking about the air signs of the Zodiac, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. What? Aquarius is an air sign? Hell yeah it is! Thanks for asking! That's one of the most common questions I get as an astrologer, which is like really confusing. It's like, ask what Chiron is or something, you know? But no, everybody's like, wait, is an Aquarius a water sign? And no, it's an air sign. It is a water bearer though, so there's like a lot of confusion there with that. We're back in my wheelhouse this week, which I'm very excited about because I was not all there last week, but thanks for watching me suffer. <laughs> we already know a little bit about the air signs. If you missed the elements video, here's a little card. Go click it, come back, or watch this video and then go watch that one, or just don't watch either of them and I'll see you next time. So we already know the air signs to be very thoughtful as well as very communicative. And these three signs all have different ways that they like to approach conversation or friendship, if you will. Geminis love talking to people from different walks of life and exploring different mindsets of people that are extremely different from them. A Libra likes to find people who balance them out. They're very self-aware, so they can tell when they're lacking something and they need that from someone else. Aquarius generally like to be around people who have the same mindset as them and are on the sort of same wavelength through life. We talked in the other videos about how every sign has a quality. They're either cardinal, fixed, or mutable. Cardinal signs take initiative, fixed signs are pre-planners, mutable signs love change. Gemini is the mutable quality of the air signs, Libra is cardinal, and Aquarius is fixed. Before I get into the video, I do just want to mention, I know there was a little bit of concern in my last video that I was just using these books and not giving them credit for their sort of quotations, but I do just want to say these are all my interpretations and I'm using these books to sort of confirm them. If I ever use a direct quote from anything, I will always cite it, and all of the books that I use are always linked down below. Well, what do you say we start with Gemini? Because that's my moon sign, and they're the true ruler of the third house. A jack of all the trades, that be a mastery of none. That's the way of a Gemini. That's the way of a Gemini. Gemini rules the third house, the house of communication. Their glyph looks like this, their planetary ruler is Mercury, their symbol is the twins, and their mantra is I think. Gemini's minds move very quickly, so using their words is sort of a way for them to anchor themselves. Their planetary ruler is Mercury, and Mercury in retrograde, as we have all heard, I'm sure, is a challenge for them because Mercury goes into retrograde about three to four times per year, but it's not always a bad thing. I thought I would just address that quickly, but we are going to have a video about all of the planets in their retrograde position after we do the water signs, which is coming up really soon, so get ready ladies! Since Geminis are anchored by their words, it's a very powerful tool for them to use, but they have to stay away from being chatterboxes. Since their minds move very fast and they use their words to sort of focus that energy, they do tend to be very talkative and maybe a little bit annoying to people around them who don't want them to talk as much. So it is important for them to learn the connection between the mind and the mouth and figure out how to talk eloquently rather than just talking often. Geminis have an inherent thirst for knowledge, so education can be very important to them from a very young age. However, Geminis really like to pick many different areas of life and learn thoroughly about those areas, so having a good variety of knowledge will actually make Geminis a lot happier, otherwise they can fall depressed if they feel stuck in one area of life. Geminis can be very nervous and this also makes them very intuitive because they're hyper aware of everything that's going on around them, so this makes them very trustworthy in emergency situations. This nervous energy starts in the mind but often works towards the hands, so you can find them fidgeting very often, but if a Gemini can learn how to calm the mind as well as the body, they can really harness this energy and use it to inform the many different areas of life that they're trying to explore. 
Geminis inherently have a bit of a charm to them, so it's really easy to get along with the Gemini. When Geminis are young, these are extremely formative years for them, so it's important that they train early, because once they're off on their own, it's up to them to continue their own education. And if this passion is instilled in them from a very young age, they can be very powerful in the business world as well as the arts. Since a Gemini's mind works so fast, it is important for them to try and stay away from negative thoughts because this can lead them down a rabbit hole of negative tendencies and bad habits that lead well into their adulthood. Live, live, Libra, live, 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 bow, flirt, and conquer, then withdraw. Libra rules the seventh house, the house of union, marriage, and partnerships. Their glyph looks like this, their planetary ruler is Venus, their symbol is the scales, and their mantra is I balance. When a Libra is young, they seek popularity and approval from others. But as Libras get older, they realize that that's very silly. Since Libra rules the seventh house, the house of marriage and unity and partnership, they do seek special companionship out of life, but they also have to learn that they are enough just on their own. Aww. Libras work very hard and they have a strong sense for what is right, so when they do find partnership, they want their partners to work just as hard as they do. Saturn is exalted in this sign, so the Saturn return is very important to Libras. We're gonna have another video talking about Saturn return because I think it deserves it, but basically it's when the transit Saturn conjuncts your natal Saturn. It happens around the time you're 27 to 29, and then it'll happen every 27, 29th year after that. But when this happens, there's this extreme sense of confinement, and it's sort of like the phoenix arising from the ashes. I just thought of that just now, and I think it's really cool, I'm gonna use it. And they can finally awaken and realize those things that have been holding them back all of this time. Libras love talking about new ideas, things relating to philosophy and psychology and human connection. They often make really good therapists and also armchair therapists, which is a term that I just learned, which basically means like your friend who's just there to listen to you and can give you really good advice. Because of this, they frequently play the role of the peacemaker. Since Venus rules Libra, they're often very compassionate and loving, and they're not very quick to anger, but when they do get angry, it's a little terrifying. Think of like a tornado inside of a living room. They're very good at using pretty much everything you've ever said as ammunition during an argument, but because this is so infrequent, after the argument is over, they often look almost sick. But when it comes down to it, they really just want everyone to get along and us all to just hold hands and walk off into the sunset together. So when misplaced, a Libra can worry too much about the people around them and lose touch with their own individuality. They can also have these strange bursts of anger and hold on to things from the past. I am an Aquarian, I am an Aquarian, I am an Aquarian, I am an Aquarian, I am an Aquarian. Aquarius is the ruler of the 11th house, the house of friendship, which is downright adorable. Their glyph looks like this, their planetary ruler is Uranus, their symbol is the water bearer, and their mantra is I know. For an Aquarius, friendship and companionship are extremely important, and if an Aquarius deems you as their friend, they will be unwaveringly loyal. Because Aquarius is a fixed sign, they can be deemed a bit stubborn, and they can get very irritated when they feel like you're not understanding what they're trying to say. Because of this, Aquarius can often be argumentative, and they're known to sort of drop people if they feel like you're not living up to their level of intellect. That's not to say that an Aquarius is high-strung in any way. Actually, they really enjoy learning about different ideas, but they hate it when they feel like you're copying someone else's thought or being hypocritical. Since Uranus is their ruling planet, they love meeting new people and learning about new ideas, but they're not going to stand it if they feel like you're not genuinely yourself. An Aquarius isn't one for sports or physical activity, uh, same. Their way through life is much more through the mind. Once an Aquarius is inspired, there's really no stopping them, which leads me to believe that an Aquarius is usually in tune with creative jobs, but not necessarily in front of the camera. They definitely have a tendency to exaggerate because of this story writing quality that they have, but they also have a lot of charm and light that make them more and more likable. 
Outwardly, an Aquarius can appear very calm, but this couldn't be further from the truth. An Aquarius is extremely nervous and anxious because of this desire for hard work, so learning self-care can really help an Aquarius work to their best potential. That's it for the air signs, you guys. Make sure to leave some comments down below. Give me a little story or something about like one of your friends that's an air sign. I'd love to hear it. I'm in like that story writing mode because I was just talking about Aquarius. So let's hear some stories. Next week, we're talking about the water signs. So you can get ready for that. Make sure to share this video with your favorite air sign. Let me know what type of videos you guys want to see. If you guys liked, thank you for liking. If you subscribed, thank you for subscribing. And if you did neither, do one, do both. That would be even better if you did both of those things. That's it for today's video. I post every Tuesday and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Many Aquariuses, Aquarians, I don't like the plural of these. It makes me feel weird to say them. So what do we, this nervous energy Friendship and companionship are extremely important to an a Aquarius. I was going to say Aries. I mean, like, no, I don't really care about my friends. They have inherent, I keep saying inherent, inherent.